Hi, I'm Ethan, and I'm 30 years old. Before I begin my story, don't forget to support me by subscribing to the channel. My story is about a mysterious wife and how I uncovered her secret. Well, to be fair, I had a secret of my own, but that'll come later. First, let me start with how I met my wife, Jody. I was at a club with my friends. Well, I wasn't actually there to have fun, but to keep an eye on someone. That's where Jody approached me. At that time, I wasn't much interested in her, but she didn't leave my side. Even after that night at the club, she kept trying to contact me. I gave in and decided to go on a date with her. She actually seemed nice after I got to know her. She told me that she was still studying. What about you? she asked. I'm a government employee, I replied. Whoa, really? she exclaimed in surprise. That's pretty cool. I thought that you were an engineer or something, but that's even better. Our conversation continued and something about Jody just kept bothering me. I couldn't put my finger to it, but something was off. And my instincts are never wrong. This only made me more curious about her, and I kept meeting her after that. We got close, or at least I pretended to like her. As for her, I couldn't tell whether she had genuine feelings towards me or not. As I said, something just wasn't right about her, something very unsettling. She used to give me vague answers to specific questions, and often her eyes used to roam around the place, assessing everyone keenly. I knew that kind of thing all too well, since I'd been practicing it for years now, keeping an eye on my surroundings and making sure that no one suspicious was around was part of my job. But whenever I was with Jody, I tried not to make it too obvious. Anyway, after dating for a few months, we got married. I wouldn't say that I really liked her. It was more out of curiosity. She was hiding something, that was for sure. And I had nothing to lose by marrying her. In fact, I needed that kind of cover to continue to do my job smoothly. It was after we got married that some things started to become clear. Jody wasn't actually enrolled in university. She told me that she was doing some online courses, and she often used to disappear from the house, saying she needed to visit the library or attend some study group with her friends. Well, those were all excuses. I followed her a few times to find out that she was actually visiting the library. But she probably knew I was watching her. Maybe she thought any kind of doubts I had would disappear after seeing her go there. But there were two things that caught my attention. One was her earpiece, hidden underneath her hair. I often caught her covering her mouth pretending to yawn, when actually she was whispering behind her hand. And second was the fact that she used to select the same book every day to read, a book related to environmental studies. And it was weird because she told me her course was related to computer science and coding. Well, after she was convinced that I won't follow her anymore, I made a plan. I went to the library before her and walked straight to the shelf where Jody's book was placed. I took out the book and flipped through the pages. There was nothing out of the ordinary in there, but there was a page halfway through the book that was a bit different from others. It wasn't noticeable, but some of the letters appeared bolder than others, as if someone had overwritten over them. I pieced all the bold letters together, trying to make sense of things, but it was just gibberish, or should I say, a code that I didn't understand. I clicked a picture of the page and left before Jody could arrive. The next day, I went back to the library before Jody and opened the same book. This time, there were more bold letters. So I was right. Jody was using this book to communicate with someone. By now, I had deduced one thing. She was a spy. But that wasn't enough information. At home, I tried keeping things normal, appearing like a common office worker slumped with tasks from day till night. One day when Jody left, I started searching around the house for clues about her identity. Of course, it wasn't in plain sight. I found her agency badge inside dirty socks that hadn't been washed for months. Ugh. I pinched my nose and clicked a picture of her badge before placing it back in its original place. 
The detail that her badge revealed, though, was that she was a Chinese spy. Jody probably wasn't even her real name. How ironic. My real name wasn't Ethan, either. By now you may have guessed it, I'm a CIA agent. Even in her wildest dreams, Jody could have never imagined that she married her worst enemy. I sent all the photos that I had collected to my agency. A few days later, after they decoded the messages, I was told that Jody was going to attend an upcoming political event where she'd be meeting an informant. This was obviously a meeting that would lead towards a bigger, more dangerous plan. A plan that we knew nothing about. And now, my job was to prevent this meeting and turn the tables on her. I went to the event in disguise, and the first thing I did was look for the informant. It was quite difficult to scan the crowd for suspicious people, but my job was made easy when I spotted Jody. Her eyes were constantly glancing in the direction of a person wearing a hoodie. He was using his phone, but I didn't miss it when he dropped something to the ground. When he leaned down, I saw him hiding a small note under one of the chairs. Wow, they were doing this right in front of everyone's eyes. But funny enough, no one cared. After that, the informant got up from his seat and went toward the direction of the exit. I called my companion and told them to get him discreetly. And my other companion was already doing her job. She bumped into Jody at the right time and grabbed her attention. I took this time to quickly replace the note with a fake one and go back to my position. Jody was distracted for quite a few minutes before she finally got free and went to pick up the note. I couldn't help but laugh slightly when she pretended to drop her phone. She was really putting a lot of effort into this. I clicked a photo of the original note and then tore it to pieces. Meanwhile, I saw how Jody frowned when she read the note that I had left her. Well, it was a natural reaction. After all, I'd confessed to knowing her secret in that note. She immediately glanced around and started walking towards the exit. So... Even the best of spies panic when they're faced with danger. I blocked her way before she could get out and grabbed her hand. Come with me quietly and maybe I'll help you, I whispered. She had no choice. She had to come with me either way. How did you find out? She asked as soon as we were outside. Did you tell anyone? Look, Ethan, I can explain everything. Please don't tell anyone, though. I swear I never wanted to harm you. But... You were going to harm someone else, right? I asked as she flinched. H how did you... She trailed off. We decoded all your messages. I must say, you're quite good, but you made the mistake of trusting me and thinking I was an ordinary citizen. I shook my head. It's a shame that I found out, really. What the... Who the hell are you? She asked in shock. Now, now, you can already guess. Don't make me spell it. I smiled. Sorry about your note, though, I continued. It had the information about someone's location and other details, I believe. N no, she stuttered. There's no use pretending now, I told her. It's already over. Were you just pretending to like me all this time? She suddenly asked. Are you really that despicable? Not more than you, I said. You were trying to use me as a cover for your spying activities or whatever it was. Both of us are guilty here. What if I say I actually liked you? She countered. I even knew about the time when you used to follow me to the library to keep an eye on me. You know that if I wanted to, I could have gotten rid of you then and made it look like an accident. But I didn't want to. I really trusted you. I thought you were just checking to make sure I wasn't lying. But wow, you turned out to be someone entirely different. I scoffed. Are you really trying to go down that road? Honestly, why should I believe you? Even if you do like me, I don't care. This is not how it works. Our relationship was built on lies and secrets. I was never serious, and neither were you. Now, stop trying to convince me, because it won't work. I'll see you in the interrogation room tomorrow. I watched as two guys from the agency appeared and took her away. She kept protesting, but there wasn't much she could do. 
It was a good thing that her plans failed before they could be fully implemented. 